Hey guys, it's Landon from RH. In this video, I'm going to teach you a couple different ways, two or three different ways to draw curves when you're doing Kogo for survey line work. It's been a while since I recorded any Kogo videos, but my team is working on monument preservation and a couple modern subs, and they need a little extra help. So I'm going to show you how to how to do this. This video is not going to show you how you draw a tangent curve using the typical method. So I'm going to use a couple non-typical methods. One is with the cord, when you have the cord bearing distance. Another is using the fillet command. I'll probably do a different video where I show you how to draw curves with radials. We'll see how long this takes. Anyways, we're, we're running these commands in Carlson, uh, Carlson Survey 2023. So it's going to be different if you're using a different program like AutoCAD Civil or Microsurvey. It's going to be a little bit different. All right, so here's the hypothetical situation we've got set up. We've got a couple tangents here that we've drawn, a couple straight lines that are joined by this curve. So what we're trying to draw looks like this. But you got to remember we don't have the curve yet. Okay, so all we have is the two tangents. These are called tangents, the straight line segments that go in and out of the curve. And the surveyor doesn't give us the central angle or the arc length, let's say. All they give us is the radius, which is 300 feet, and the cord bearing and distance. And that's okay. That I actually like that method better. I like having the cord bearing and distance on the on the map or the or the legal in the legal description because it actually makes it a little easier to check closures. So what? How do you draw this curve if all you're given is the radius and the cord bearing and distance? You don't have a central angle or an arc length. Draw your tangent in, which I have here, and then you're going to draw your cord bearing and distance. Now what I'm going to do? We're just going to recreate this down below here. So we're going to say Kogo line by angle distance, and our first bearing is southeast. We are 70 degrees, 39 minutes, 44 seconds, 1684.90. Okay, so there's our next line. Now the next thing we want to do is draw the cord in. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Kogo line by angle distance. We have a bearing in northeast, 84 degrees, 47 minutes, 46 seconds, it looks like. Sorry, 84, 47, 46, and we're going to go 249.21. So now we have our cord bearing in. That's this line right here. Okay, and then we've got our last line we'll draw. I, and I already have these lines drawn, but I just wanted to walk you guys walk you guys all the way through this. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Line by angle distance. So we've got a bearing of northeast, 60.1515, 633.02. All right, so we end up with something like this. All we're missing now is the curve. Okay, so how do you put the curve in? What we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle that is the uh, radius of the curve. So this is 300 feet. We're going to draw it at each end. And that's going to give us these two intersection points. And one of those, of those two possible intersection points, is the intersection for our curve. I'm sorry, is the radius, the radius point of our curve. Now, because we know this curve is concave to the north. In other words, it cups to the north or curves to the north. We want the intersection point that is to the north. So once you have this intersection point, you can go in and use the draw arc command. So we're going to draw an arc. We're going to go from the point of curvature to the center to the point of tangency. So point of curvature is going to be the first point, the first endpoint of the cord bearing. The center is going to be that intersection point. And then the point of tangency is the last point of the cord bearing. And it says, is this correct? We're going to say yes. Now we got our curve. Okay. 
So let me show you that one more time because I went a little fast. We're going to go draw, arc, point of, point of curvature, or point of uh, this is sometimes called a begin curve, center or radius point, point of tangency or end curve. Pick the first point on your chord bearing, then pick your center, then pick your end point on your chord, and it draws, draws the chord. Now, if that doesn't work right, you got to go the other direction. Pick this as your point of curve, center, and point of tangency. Now, what at my shop, what we'll do is we'll then add this chord bearing to the tie line layer. If you wanted, you could add the radials. You could draw in the radials like this and add those to the tie line layer. After you're done, you can delete those circles. Now, I'm going to show you another way to do this. The other way you can do it is you can draw some lines that are perpendicular to your two tangents. So we're just going to use the perpendicular uh, snap to do that. Then you want to make those 300 feet. So whatever your radius is, in this case it's 300 feet. So we'll use the length and command to do that. And we're going to say, give me total length of 300 feet. And then we can move those to the end. of our lines. Okay, I am actually going to um, I'm actually going to do this just so you guys can see because we won't know where those join. So then when you when you get your radials on the ends of your two tangents, your two straight lines piece, straight line uh, segments, you can join them at the ends here. And then you have again, you have what you need now. You can go draw arc point of curvature, center point of tangency and I'll draw that in. That might be a little easier than doing the circles, whatever whatever you want, either method works. Okay, and we now have that curve in. All right, now the other way you can do this is, uh, let me see, is that gonna work? Yeah, this will work. Now, this is gonna mess up the length of your straight line segments your tangents a little bit, but it will work. So you take your two tangents, you draw your two tangents, you don't even need the chord bearing for this. And if you know this is a tangent curve, this only works for tangent curves. If you know this is a tangent curve, you can run the fillet command, put in your radius, so we're going to say radius 300 feet, and you just fill it, your two straight line segments, it's going to put that curve in. Now you got to remember, you just shorten these segments so you gotta you gotta lengthen those so we're gonna go we need 66302 lengthen and we're gonna say total 63302 uh, let's see Oop, there we go and then this other one we need 168490 lengthen Total 1684.90 and lengthen that. And then of course you would just label these. And then if you want to check that curve from the fillet command, you can just drop your chord bearing in there. It should land at the ends of the curve and it does. All right, so those are two different ways to draw a curve with the chord bearing. This first method that I showed you, you can actually use that for non-tangent curves too, not just tangent. The second method with the fillet command only works for tangent curves. It's a little quicker. All right, there you go. Now you know how to draw curves from a chord bearing a distance. I'll try and remember to do some more Kogo videos. Kogo is an essential tool in the Boundary Surveyor's toolkit. Thanks for watching.